good morning. In the next couple of days I will be filming the interior. We do a walk around of uh, Great Circle, the new. Well, I'm home alone. And Marek is still in Holland and she will uh, join after Mother's Day. And uh, so there's plenty of time for me to uh, play with the cameras and uh, show you the boat. Early in the morning. Nobody there yet, <laughs> not at the jet skis as well. So let's go on board. Carbon gangway with a logo on. You can adjust the table in several ways. First you can open it. So now it's the dining table. So now it's a lounge area or a bed. Perfect uh, for night watches. So I got a call this morning from Marijke, who wasn't pleased that I didn't tow my shoes and uh, dress the cushions like uh, it would have been done by a boatyard. Well, just for Marijke here, a couple of seconds uh, like uh, how it should have been probably. So this is the base setup of the cockpit uh, table. We made a lot of work making it convertible in all sorts of ways. So first you can of course unfold the table. There are supports on this side. <laughs> Take them out and then of course open the tick. So we got a dining table now. And then we're gonna refold it. We need those little feet. I'm gonna screw that in. So now the feet are in, and now we can open this. Do, 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 do. Well, to be absolutely honest, I'm not sure whether this is the way it should. There's a thin cushion under here to keep it level. But, well, the general idea <laughs> is that you can uh, face backwards. Especially interesting if uh, you really, really, really like your dinghy. Because that's mainly what you're going to see this way. But, uh, <laughs> well, you can put it in the water, of course, and uh, remove the enclosure. You can put it in 30 or in 45 degrees, depending on how you put the blocks underneath. <laughs> it's kind of comfortable uh, here. Yeah, I put the cushions uh, the way you want them to, and the shoes are uh, not in sight. So it should be okay, Marijke. Let's see what happens if we remove the blocks. Maybe it's a bit bad then. It kind of is, but it's not, it's not level, so maybe that's not... That's not really the idea. Additional sockets over here, next to the coffee machine, and then we don't have any gas on board, so everything's electric. And, uh, this is the induction plate with three hops. A freezer on this side, the drawers, the drawers, and then there is the Two drawers as well. With a wine rack there. Cabinets. 
So this is normally folded away, but it's easy to up, get it up. And then uh, you can take one of those, or two of those. And have a decent position here as well. See Marijke, the cushions are still there. <laughs> Take two without the towel. So on this side we have the storage boxes. They, they come with the boat, and it's in the standard. And we bought a soda stream. So we don't have to carry a lot of plastic bottles on board. In combination with uh, the seagull filter, uh, which filters the water additionally. Let's just have a look. So it's not full yet. But for us, uh, it, it has more than enough uh, capacity. Miele combi oven, microwave and oven. A decent drawer for the knives and forks. <laughs> Even better than on the Lagoon. We moved a couple of instruments to the side, like the Vesper and the handheld, to be able to install the monitor over here. So just to be sure, this is not a plotter. This is just an ordinary monitor. Yeah. Like you can buy, every, it's just a couple of hundred euros. And it's connected via HDMI to this plotter over here. So if I choose here another, for instance, the radar, then you can see the radar over there as well. One of the things I'm often asked is how do you control the screen? Well, BNG has this kind of remote, it's built in here in the chart table. Basically, you can do all the functions you can do outside with the plotter on the touch screen as well. So let's change to the chart window, and now we can zoom in and out or position the cursor any way we want and do all the stuff that you normally could do here's the bar, edit, let's change this field push and we're going up, 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 up date, time, local date and time that's there and we can even uh, Use the autopilot from here. On heading hold, you would be able to set the course just by turning the knob over there. Yeah. It takes some getting used to if you're used to the touchscreen of the Zeiss. The most important thing here is that you watch which window is active. So especially when you're on heading hold or on wind angle for that matter. If you want to zoom in on the chart, you tend to just turn the knob. Uh, but if you do that, yeah, you all of a sudden are 10 or 20 degrees off course. When we use the autopilot, just put the window not on the autopilot window. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is, but normally it makes sense to have it on the chart window and then uh, everything will be okay. So the large front windows are set up that you can lock them in di different positions. Yep. It's automatically locked electronically as well, but you can also lock it in in between positions with a little. So, and it ventilates the boat really, really, really well. Most of you will remember the traditional control systems for the, all the functions on board. And here uh, on this boat, it's all combined in the sea zone display where you can both monitor and control uh, well most of the functions on board I'm not going through the, the whole uh, list but uh, you can switch the touch screen from one item to the other so I just filled up the water tanks again this morning We're still on the first load of fuel. I knew there are all kinds of shortcuts or groups where you can put everything on and off at 
the same time. Uh, but sometimes uh, it makes sense to go to individual items. Like for instance when you're sailing you can turn off the water heater. For a detailed description of the electrical setup it's probably better to watch the video we made a couple of months ago already. Next to the 220 volt switches, there's the, the main uh, mass combi and it's combined with a second one here to the side. So it's a combination of charger and inverter, about 3500 watts on uh, 24 volts. When we put it on shore power or using the genset, we, we do see that it uh, is able to charge uh, 200 amps at the same time. So the biggest part of the electronics is uh, right here next to the combis, the charger inverters. Here are the controllers for the solar panels. So the four little ones for uh, four groups on the roof, on the bimini. And this one is for the one on the davits. So in the standard there are six panels on each side on the bimini. So six on this side. And six on starboard as well. And then here in the back on the davits. 1248 watts on the Bimini and 800 here in the back, so in total we're uh, over 2000 watts. Uh, right next to it are the three lithium batteries, masterful 200 amp hours uh, per battery. In the back there are the controls for the bilge pump, the bilge pump alarm where you can turn it off uh, for the anchor winch. DC DC converters and here next to the batteries is the unit for the air conditioning. In the end it wasn't enough. They found out after installing the first one and uh, therefore they installed the second one in the closet in the, in the master hole. What we do like about the Aztec floor is that it runs through the saloon and the cockpit. So it makes it seem like one big space. Now it's uh, really cool, but it gets really, really, really hot in the, in the sun. It seems pretty new to Utrecht to uh, to implement uh, Aztec floors. They got a su new supplier for that, and well, we're not 100% happy with the way they implemented it. This is the bathroom, one big basin over here in the toilet. Toilets we chose for a similar model as we had on the previous boat. Uh, they're electrical, but these ones uh, work both on salt and sweet water. In the offshore maintenance course, uh, Loic explained us that it's probably wiser to use them on uh, fresh water only. And a very nice uh, shower. With uh, both a hand shower and a rain shower. Plenty of height in the shower. As you can see, I am 6'3, so 187. And there is at least, uh, at least 30 centimeters uh, on my head. There is uh, plenty of storage behind those mirrors and down here. So, of course. The width of the hulls is uh, limited compared to uh, what we used to before, but it's still uh, plenty. Uh, and we have the whole hull for ourselves here. The wood in here is not in the standard. So there are a couple of other options and very similar options, but this one is, uh, is a bit different. We saw that Frank Danet, the interior designer of the boat, and we were able to choose this uh, well, on a semi-custom base. I think, uh, I believe a couple of other boats have ordered it in the meantime as well. In the closets here, there is storage space and uh, the washing machine. I'm gonna make another shelf here 
storage, 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 storage. And storage, 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 storage. On this boat there is an escape hatch on both sides. It might not even be necessary for the certification, but uh, they still have it. And you can close off this hole with the sliding door. The beds in the back are uh, at least 180. There's a little bit of room uh, on the side as well still. There's plenty of light. I opened up the blinds for you. I think we have seven USB outlets in, uh, in the master hole. There are two over there. And there's one next to the socket over there. See, we brought our Peter's Cafe hats from the Azores, which we hope to visit on the way back. So there's storage space underneath the bed. So this is the isolation transformer. It makes sure that the internal systems are not damaged by uh, malfunctions of the shore power. And this side the air conditioning. Domatic for the master hull. Here's the outlet of the air conditioning and the controls. We don't use the air conditioning a lot, but uh, it is really nice when you're on uh, an anchorage without wind or in a marina to get the heat out of the hull uh, just before going to bed. Edges, of course, have the double function with the mosquito net. You can open it. Close it like this on an anchorage with the windows opening from the front. There's a nice breeze coming in. So, this is the port cabin, port front cabin. It's a little bit smaller than the beds uh, in the back, but uh, still quite okay. In the port hull, we have a separate bathroom and a hatch. This is the shower and the sink and the toilet on the other side. So let's have a look in the port side engine compartment. The water maker. It's a desolator, French, French design, which is supplied in most of the People seem to be pretty happy with it. It runs on 12 or 24 volts uh, as well as 220, 230. You can operate it from down here, but uh, there's a control panel in the saloon. There's a manual flush option, but it uh, automatically flushes after operation. And the membranes are over there. There is a separate engine control box. So in the box there is a remote battery switch. So we can shut off the battery from underneath the chart table. It's Alpha Pro, I don't know exactly what that means. And of course all the wires are here. For the alternator and the starter. Domestic battery and the emergency something. <laughs> oh, it makes sense to find out. It says emergency starter, but I'm not sure what that means and when to use it and even how. So that's maybe a question to be asked. I found out uh, what the emergency starting cable mean. It's just to connect uh, the two different uh, batteries of the engines. If one uh, battery would be empty, then you can use the other one to start uh, both engines. The battery is over there. And this is the command box for the ZF. So the electronic throttles. So on this side of the Volvo engine is the famous MDI box. <laughs> Alternator here, one on the 10 amps, 24 volts. And this is the drive unit of the second autopilot. So we have an LS uh, drive unit on the other side, together with the H5000, and this is the Raymarine one. It only has a heading mode. It's totally independent of the rest of the system, so if we have a problem like lightning or whatever, with the primary one, we can just switch to this one. We don't have to change anything except for turning the switch. 
So underneath the bench here is the live raft and you can get it from both ways. So from up here and in the unlikely event that the boat's going to be upside down you can uh, reach it from below as well which will be up then of course. So in the back of the boat when you open the hatch there's the swimming ladder and you can just put it in and this will automatically fold. Well it works pretty well. And then starboard engine compartment. Here's the primary autopilot, the Lacombe Schmidt LS. The drive unit itself works hydraulic, but the steer is connected with the cables and with the rod that's in the ceiling of the bedroom. And really today moved this box, it was first over there, but it's hard to reach it over there. So we put it here and uh, changed a couple of cables. The engine itself is a Volvo D2 60, 60 horsepower. So it's uh, <laughs> not very modern, but that's uh, that's fine with us and it has a 12 volt uh, alternator on this side and uh, 24 volt one on the other side it produces 110 amps this 24 volt one but uh, it might cause some vibrations so we're looking into that there you see the hoses to the outside shower that unit's going to be replaced as well because it will allow water to come into the engine room and we don't want that. And on the other side, here's the water heater. If I remember correctly, we have 40 liters of hot water in this boat. Fresh water pump for the starboard side. That valve goes to the tank. Water tank shuttle valve and this is water tank connection for so you can uh, connect the uh, starboard and the port side uh, water systems and of course you've seen the dinghy already it's a console jockey seat well, let's have a look at the front We have the same bean bags we had on the previous boat. Really nice. This hatch, the generator is <coughs> installed. So it's a Fisher Panda 10,000i. When it runs, um, we uh, we charge the batteries with about uh, 200 amps. You don't have to use it a lot, but uh, even if you use it, uh, it takes only one hour to. Uh, to fully charge the batteries. On the side of this same hatch is one of the two fuel tanks. There's another one in the hatch there. 300 liters and they're uh, connected down there with a transfer line. And on the other side there's the anchor. Talked about the chain already, 70 meters and 50 meters of rope as well. And the blue thingy in the back is the black water tank. This hatch is for the anchor winch. <laughs> so new try now without all the sand in here. This is the anchor winch and the uh, fresh water deck wash pump. It does make sense to get the salt off after sailing. So sail lockers in the huge bows. So plenty of space here. The reel with the lines. This is the symmetrical spinnaker. And behind that you can put all kind of stuff. The fishing net and the fishing rods are there. There's another cushion and uh, plenty of space left. There's a light. We made an installation for the second anchor, Fortress. Uh, put this one uh, sideways and that one the other. Way around. So we're in the starboard bow compartment now. There's uh, 20 sockets made here to 
charge stuff. The other front sails are, are over here. I don't want to store a lot more in here so uh, I'm able to get the sails out easily. There's only the other beanbag and some of the flat fenders. No Great Circle has four uh, electric winches uh, on the helm station, Arkan 60s. So we can uh, operate them using the foot buttons, so you are able to use both hands. The red line is a sheet. I'm told that it's German sheeting, a German setup of the sheet, I don't know. Yeah. So you can operate the sheet. The main sheet, uh, you can operate it from both sides, both on port side and on uh, starboard. So here you have the halyard for the Code Zero, it's double one. And the halyard for the Spinnaker, or the um, Downwind Jenniker, which is a single one. And it goes just a little bit higher up the mast. This double line is the furler of the front sail, so the, there's a separate furler for the self-taking jib. And the light grey line with the clutch over there is used to lower or raise uh, the dagger boards, one on each side. And again you can move the wheel, so uh, whichever way you want. I saw Arthur on Saga uh, steer with his feet, but you can also <laughs> sit down and uh, Steer like this. So we're moving the wheel to the upright position now. Click. You can stand here and have a good view. So these are the electronic uh, throttles. ZF. Like we had on the previous boat. It does work really nice, uh, electronic uh, throttles, but you have to know how it works. It's especially important to know that there's a safety on it when you switch gears, so from forward to backwards and, and the other way around. You have to wait a certain period depending on the RPM in neutral before you go the other side, otherwise uh, nothing will happen. The H5000 display and control for the autopilot, it's really nice here. So you get feedback on the display, which heading or which mode uh, you are actually applying. Line driver, you can move the traveler. It comes. So on port side uh, we have the three reef lights, green, yellow and red, we have one, two and three. We have the sheet as well, like on the other side, so you can control them on both sides. This is the sheet of the self-taking chip, the halyard of this, the halyard of the main and this one with the knot in so we can't tie it uh, and intentionally is the boom lift that you want to keep up there. Fenders are all inflatable. So uh, during longer passages you could just uh, deflate them and they take less storage. 